The TV commentators show the viewers why freedom and respect for property rights produce economic prosperity, like I did with Senator Brown. Do you think a person will save if his rights are not protected, if his individual property rights are not protected, if the amount that he saves is taxed, or if he's worried that somebody might confiscate it? Well, you've pinpointed the single most important factor, and that is to encourage people to put aside for the future. They've got to be convinced that the amount they put aside is going to be theirs in the future. If there's a suggestion, it'll be expropriated. If there's a danger, someone will steal it from them. The disincentive to save and reinvest in our society is gone. So first comes some security, some feeling, some confidence that what we put aside today will be there tomorrow. And also the, not to tax the savings at a very high rate because if you do that, what's the point in saving, right? Well, we've experimented as a country and countries around the world have experimented with various tax plans. Once we get tax rates so high that they consume much of what someone works and saves for, we discourage that kind of activity. If you tax something, you get less of it. If you reduce taxes, you tend to get more of it. If you protect individual rights, and you eliminate inflation and you permit those people that decide to to reason and produce you're going to have an increase in savings if you have an increase in savings you're going to have more money that you can use to invest in other words you'll have an increase in capital invested per person if you have an increase in capital invested per person you will have an increase in productivity individual productivity and if you have an increase in individual productivity you will have an increase in uh, the general economy and, the, and prosperity in general, which was our goal, so that's our answer.